This is the Self-Aware Leader Podcast. Now your host, Jason Rigby. We are having an amazing day today, guys. I hope you are. I hope you're enjoying being a servant leader. And that's what I want to talk about today. I want to get into, we're going to talk about Jesus. And you're like, Jesus? Uh, no, I'm not into that. Like the Christian stuff, I, I, my neighbor's that way and they're all weird. That's not what I'm talking about. Whether you believe in Jesus, whether you don't, whether you believe the Bible is the word of God or what, whatever it is, it does not matter. That's not what I'm talking about. I like to use him as an example because in the Bible, the story in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, those four books, talk about this amazing man, whether it's a myth or not, let's not get into that. Semantics of that, let's just pull that aside. Pretend it's a book, and we're going to talk about a great leader. This great leader knew that he was going to be facing issues. He could see the pressure being built up around him politically. He could see he had already pissed off the religious leaders at that time. Political leaders are kind of like, what's going on? You know, you had uh, these Jewish religious leaders that were coming hard on them, and then they were putting pressure on the political side of things at Rome, and so they're Romans. They don't care. It's like, well, let's just get rid of this guy. So let's up to the crucifixion and all that stuff. A lot of pressure happening. If you're a leader and there's death on the scene, there's arrest on the scene, what are you going to do? Well, I think Jesus was absolutely amazing when it came to being a leader and having personal issues and facing the most difficult time he ever faced in his life. And this is an example for us guys. A lot of us can lead, and John Maxwell talks about this, uh, this particular, uh, you know, in, in the book of John, he talks about this. A lot of people can lead when there's momentum. When everything's are going good and it, everything's on your side, it's amazing. But it takes a true leader to lead. When death is staring you in the face. And during this time, we get a peek into a window of seeing what great leaders do under pressure. And I love looking at these, and we're going to look at a lot of different people through history. Because leadership to me is seeing the mistakes and seeing the amazing things and looking at humans in general and seeing what we can do when we're in and above our higher self living in that moment of what our higher self is, the best of us. So here's a leader. He's in the most stressful situation imaginable. Yet, in this craziness, he displays the most peace than ever before. He communicates vision to his followers to those he serves, to his team, more vividly and more detailed than ever before. He goes and talks to his staff, his team, those that are following him, and he tells them how much he believes in them and the work that they're going to do is be even amazing. And he tells them constantly how much he loves them. He goes and makes sure that he speaks of their future and he lays a perfect track down for his followers to run on. And he makes it clear, here's the track, here's what I'm laying, here's how we're going to do it, this is the direction we're going, and you're going to do this without me. And you know he is tapping into his higher self, to God, universe, Because he's praying more intensely than ever before. We could see the garden and and all that story. And I want to break these down just real quick today. Because this is going to help us. When you're feeling under pressure, when you're feeling overwhelmed, what do we want to do? We want to contract, right? Not expand. We want to contract. And you can see this when, you know, a few years ago we had the huge thing that went around the world. If I say it, they do all kinds of crazy stuff with numbers and everything else. Isn't that crazy? It's just silly. And what happened? Our leaders all contracted, right? Everything was a contraction on all sides. Bad leadership all the way around. 
Under pressure, contraction. And a lot of us tend to do this because we want to withdraw, don't we? We want to run and hide. That's the easy thing to do as a leader because you're worried about yourself. You're worried about your reputation. You're worried about what other people are thinking of you. And now you're facing these headwinds and you know that there's a storm and you're like, nope, I'm going to turn around and head back. I, I'm, I'm not going to go through this storm. But what do you do when rough times are ahead? This is a perfect example, guys. Servant leadership at its best right here. You 10X everything for those that you serve. That's what you do. You pour yourself into your family. You pour yourself into those that you love the most. You pour yourself into your team, your buzz, your business, your company, whatever it may be. Those that you influence around you, pour yourself into them. Allow that servanthood, allow that service to others transform. It will transform on its own. It's alchemy, guys, spiritual alchemy. It will transform on its own the problems that you have. This is the example. What did he do? He communicated his vision more vividly. Over and over and over again, he shared the vision. What does the vision look like? When you have tough times going on, you have to double down on the vision. And a lot of you, I talk to you guys all the time, business leaders, a lot of you do not take the time to share vision. You should be throwing out vision with every conversation you have. A little part of it, it should be positive vision, positive vision, positive vision. Um, when you're coaching time, then you can get perceived negative or whatever that looks like. But it's like, love you, thank you, appreciate you. I know this is the direction you're heading, and this is the direction that the company's heading, and it's awesome that we're working together. You believe in the vision of this company, you believe in the vision of the team, and I appreciate you. That should be a conversation that you're having all the time. What does the vision look like? Those are the meetings you should be having, making it clear, especially if you're having issues or problems, revenues down. I mean, Jesus here is dying. <laughs> so 20% revenue loss, come on. Let's look at the next thing that he did. He displayed more peace than ever before. That's when you get that rock of a leadership because you know those that follow you, your team, everybody around you can feel the turmoil. They know what's happening, especially if they clearly see it. So now is the time to bring in peace. Well, how do you do that, Jason? How do I bring peace to my team? By overly communicating to them and allowing them to communicate back with you. Have more team meetings. Have lunches together. Get Chick-fil-A or pizzas. Laugh. Have a good time. Allow them to share their concerns and fears and what's going on. Have the team together come up with a game plan, an action plan. Do more coaching. Allow them to talk to you one-on-one -on -one and share. And then you say, we're not going to worry about this. We see it, we recognize it, we've clearly identified the enemy or what's going on, and this is, we all have gotten together multiple times, and we've come to the conclusion of this is the game plan, and we're going to act on it. And Bill or Susan or Emily, guess what? I know it can be fearful sometimes, but I'm not worried, because I know you at your best, and this team at its best, whatever somebody throws at us, is not going to work because we're all amazing. And I've seen it happen over and over and over again. And you guys are amazing. Make it, make people feel at peace, feel safe. It's so important nowadays. People need to feel safe. They need to feel peace. If you as a leader are doing that alone, you're going to separate yourself from everybody else. Fear of missing out, fear of getting fired. I'm going to make the boss angry. The angry the boss came in, passive aggressive, not talking, slammed the door. That's a normal boss. And I hope you're not doing those things. That's a normal boss. You're a boss that is speaking peace 
sharing peace, showing love. That's the next thing. He ensured those that were around him of his love and his belief in them more than ever before. He doubled down because he knew he wasn't going to be around. And his followers had to take that message and carry it across the world. And look today, like I said, whether you believe in the Bible or you believe in Jesus or not, whether he's fictional, nonfiction, who, who, who cares? He's the most influential person in the world, period. Everybody knows who Jesus is. Bible's number one New York Times seller. I mean, it's the bestseller all the time. There's mistranslations and the words and so many people's got their hands in it and religious. I get all that. You don't have to have that argument with me. I don't need that in my DMs. We're using this person as an example of what to do when you're facing trouble ahead. What does love look like? How can you love those that are around you? By giving of your time. That's important, right? By making room to coach them, to sit with them, to be the shepherd among the sheep, right? And then a belief in them. Truly believing in someone. Not looking at their faults constantly. But actually believing in the best. Knowing that that person at their best, you know they could do an amazing job. And you believe in that. You believe in them. Sometimes you believe in them more than they believe in themselves. And you let them know that every time you coach them, you bring them in and you're like, amazing work. Jill, that was absolutely amazing what you did. The idea that you came up in the meeting and then you executed on that idea and we got this done and this happened because of this, that was all you. Amazing. Thank you. I appreciate you. I love when you're at your best because it makes my job easy. How do you think people will feel then? Clarity, guys. Clarity, clarity, clarity. Peace, peace, peace. Vision, vision, vision. Love, love, love. And a belief in those that are around you. Guaranteed you can face anything that's going on. Thank you for tuning in to the Self-Aware Leader Podcast with host Jason Rigby. We hope this episode has inspired you to unleash your full potential and embrace your inner leadership. By expanding your consciousness, you can transform your mind, body, and soul and become the remarkable leader you were always meant to be. If you found this episode valuable, please share it with your loved ones and help us expand our community. Thank you for listening, and we look forward to having you join us again on the Self-Aware Leader Podcast.